we had silver as some form of money. It was used by every major empire for the last 4,000 years, almost continuously. And I think that if people think that gold um, can, you know, be driven higher through this, this phenomenon, this FOMO phenom phenomenon, just think what it can do to silver, which goes through these periods of consolidation and then absolutely explodes higher. And, and if you look at what it did both times that it uh, that it spiked to fifty dollars, I mean it was really uh, you had I'm going to say more than a doubling in a matter of months, and so that really gives you some idea of drive that uh, and an attraction that silver will have, and um, the potential is just phenomenal. Since bottoming out around 1999, the price of gold has increased by almost 10 percent annually, offering several advantages for central banks. Joachim Wormeling of the Bundesbank recently noted that gold revaluation accounts could cover balance sheet losses, with the 3,355 tons of gold reserve being a significant asset. According to Peter Krauth, the author of Great Silver Bull, a substantial revaluation in the price of gold holds transformative potential, emphasizing its cascading effects on the silver market. He contends that such a revaluation, for instance, to $3,000 per ounce, would trigger a surge in attention driven by investors' fear of missing out. This heightened interest would prompt individuals to seek alternative investments, leading them to consider silver due to its historical significance as a form of money and its track record in hedging against inflation. While gold remains a classic safe haven asset during times of uncertainty, both precious metals exhibit a strong correlation. What we observed in the first half of 2023 is that silver emerged as a clear winner, experiencing an upswing of around 35% compared to 10% for gold. As gold becomes pricier, silver emerges as a more accessible alternative for investors seeking portfolio diversification or a hedge against economic uncertainties. This shifting perception, as suggested by Peter, could drive significant demand for silver, potentially pushing its price even higher. Silver tested the $23 level during the trading session on Friday, but it looks like it is holding though. And if that's going to be the case, then its price is simply going to stay in that same range that it has been in. Of course, silver is more sensitive to economic changes and more volatile than gold. Peter encourages investors to embrace the volatility inherent in the silver market. Rather than being deterred by price fluctuations, he urges investors to understand and strategically capitalize on them. We will present clips from Peter Krauth's interview with Andrew McGuire. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. I think that one of the things that people uh, underestimate is what uh, a, a revaluation, a considerable revaluation in gold would do to silver. And here's just one aspect of it. You know, there's there's a lot of people who just sort of chase momentum. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're seeing that with tech, we're seeing it with AI, with uh, uranium, for example. And uh, in in the case of some kind of a gold re revaluation, let's say twenty, let's say $3,000 gold, you have to imagine that naturally it's going to garner a lot of attention. And that attention will be uh, driven by FOMO, right? A lot of people will feel like they've missed out or they're worried about missing out. And what's gonna happen if it goes to 4,000 or 5,000 and people start thinking this way. So they look at gold, at, let's say at $3,000 and say, wow, one ounce of gold would set me back $3,000. What else is out there? What else can I do? What's an alternative? And silver is that natural alternative. It has been money longer than gold. It has, to some degree, helped to protect against inflation um, like gold has for centuries and millennia. And even at, say, 50 or even or $60 an ounce silver, it's going to look a whole lot cheaper than gold will at $3,000. And I think that if, if people think that gold um, can, you know, be driven higher through this this uh, this phenomenon, this FOMO phenom phenomenon. Just think what it can do to silver, which goes through these periods of consolidation and then absolutely explodes higher. And and if you look at what it did both times that it uh, that it spiked to fifty dollars, I mean it was really uh, you had uh, I'm going to say more than a doubling in a matter of months. And so that really gives you some idea of, of the kind of, of, uh, 
of drive that uh, and and attraction that silver will have, and um, the potential is just uh, phenomenal. And you know, silver has has done its share to to protect uh, against inflation. I, I remember uh, doing some research on this. Um, a while back and and think, and looking at I don't remember the exact price uh, for silver uh, when it, if we look back I said let me let me look at a century and look at the price of silver using the 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 official inflation rate in the U S so whatever the price of silver was back in 1923 and then I used uh, a uh, the official rate of inflation let's say that was somewhere around two and a half three percent and that brought the price of silver to around 11 or 1150 US currently. And so we're at more than double that. Now, of course, you can look at what silver's done. It spiked to $50 twice in its past and say, you know, silver has, has not kept up, but it has actually, if you consider at least, and, and I'm not saying that we should, but <laughs> if you consider at least official inflation rates around two and a half, three percent. Silver's more than doubled that over a century. So it's done its fair share in terms of job uh, uh, of protecting against inflation. Um, and it's and it's a fantastic vehicle. Um, I think that volatility is actually something that people should take advantage of and not uh, let it scare them away from silver. It um, People need to understand it, understand how it behaves and take advantage of that. And uh, and I and I certainly talk about that a lot in my book, uh, in terms of how and when you would, you know, position in silver, position in silver stocks, um, sell partial positions to to uh, to lock in some of those gains. Um, really, this uh, this is um, uh, a great way to uh, to diversify a portfolio. According to a recent report by the Silver Institute. Global silver demand is projected to reach 1.2 billion ounces in 2024, representing the second highest level on record. Silver plays a crucial role across various industries, integrating into many products and sectors. In recent years, one of the primary drivers of industrial silver demand has been its role in solar energy. A study suggests solar cells could consume approximately 85 to 98 percent of the world's silver reserves by 2050. The expansion of the solar panel market has consequently led to a surge in silver demand, with panels requiring more silver due to technological advancements aimed at improving efficiency. The International Energy Agency projects that solar energy will surpass coal and natural gas as the primary source of electricity generation globally by 2027, further bolstering the demand for silver. Peter emphasizes that industrial demand is a fundamental support for the price of silver, providing a stable baseline amidst fluctuations in other sectors. Let's get back to the interview. Over the last, say, maybe 10 to 15 years, for the most part, silver was about 50% industrial use and about 50%, um, I, I like to say, investment uh, use. And in there, I include things like uh, physical investment demand, so bars and coins. I include silver jewelry and I include silverware. So for me, that's all physical investment. And then the other 50% is industrial. And that's things like um, electronics, switches. Uh, you find it everywhere. It's in, it's in medicine. Uh, you can, you'll, for example, in cornea replacements, they put uh, silver nanoparticles because silver is a natural biocide. It will actually kill bacteria and the bacteria never grow accustomed to it. So it, it always works. It's been known for, for centuries and millennia to work as a, as a biocide. So um, then you've got, uh, it's in 5G, uh, you know, uh, telecommunications, it, it's more and more present in electric vehicles, uh, you find it in electronics, you find it in EV chargers, but the single biggest use in, uh, industrially for silver today, and I think if people want to follow really what's going on in the silver markets and things that are besides the investment side of it, is solar panels. That has just been a massive driver for silver demand. Um, just a couple of years ago, it was about 15% of the entire silver market every year. Last year, it already grew to 20% of the entire silver market. Um, industrial demand is about 630 million ounces. Uh, the Silver Institute thought that silver was going to represent about 160 million ounces out of about a billion ounces a year market. It ended up uh, underestimating. So the Silver Institute said 
They said solar would be about 160 million ounces of the entire silver market last year. This was back in uh, April or so. And then in, I had said by mid-year, I said, that's too low. We're looking at 180 to 190 million ounces. And when they revised their numbers back in November, they actually said, yes, it would be 190 million ounces. So I was um, much closer to the, to the higher end uh, and proper uh, final number. But... Uh, solar is just dramatic. Um, new solar technology is actually requiring more silver per panel because those panels are now more efficient. The new technologies are requiring 50 to 150% more silver per panel. So I think that we're going to see silver uh, going to solar become uh, an even bigger part of the, the silver market uh, this year. And I like to say that uh, industrial demand for silver, which has grown from the last few years ago, uh, about 50% of the market, and now we know officially last year is above 60%, I think we're going to see that maintained and continue. So uh, look, solar uh, is forecast by the International Energy Agency to surpass coal and natural gas as the largest um way of generating power worldwide, generating electricity um, by 2027. That's just three years from now. So if solar becomes the single largest source of power, um, that's going to just require more silver. And as I say, these new technologies require even more silver per panel. So Solar really is as industrial is the is the provides a rising floor under the silver price, and I think that is the investment demand as it comes in, um, you know, somewhat unpredictably from time to time, sporadically, is what creates these spikes in the silver price. With just over one month of 2024 under our belts, it is anticipated that the white metal could reach as high as 34.70 dollars per ounce which is up significantly from its current price of around $22 per ounce. As it is expected that financing conditions in the U.S. markets will tighten up and a surge in unemployment will contribute to a sharp economic slowdown. Contrary to these economic headwinds, silver demand is forecasted to soar to over 1.2 billion ounces in 2024, marking the second highest level ever recorded. This surge in demand is driven by several factors, including the industrial sector's need for silver in high-tech and green applications. Additionally, there is an expected rebound in demand for silver in the jewelry and silverware industries, further fueling the overall demand for the white metal. We would love your thoughts on Rick's predictions in the comments below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.